Hello, my name is Gloria Roberts. Today we are looking at the topic ecological management. Objectives of lesson. By the end of the lesson, students should be able to one, define association, two, mention at least five types of association, three, define and give examples of organisms in each association, four, define tolerance, and five, define tolerance range and geographic range. All right, what is association? Association can be defined as a series of interactions or relationships between two organisms of the same or of different species. Usually, organisms associate or interact with one another, mainly through their feeding relationships. The kind of association between organisms of same species is known as intraspecific association. I repeat, intraspecific association. The word intra stands for same. Why the association between organisms of different species is known as interspecific association. Interspecific association. Inter means different. Some of these associations can be beneficial. We said they are good relationship. Some can be harmful. They are bad relationship. Why are these neutral? These relationships are neither good nor bad. Let's look at some types of association. Number one, we have mutualism, also known as symbiosis. Two, commensalism. Three, we have parasitism. Four, predation. Five, competition. And six, neutralism. Symbiosis is a close and long term interaction between organisms, and each individual is known as a symbiont. Take note, each individual is known as symbiont. This can be mutual, parasitic, and even commensal. Most times, symbiosis is referred to as mutualism. Let's discuss the type of association one after the other. The first one here is mutualism. This is a symbiotic association between two unrelated organisms in which both of them benefit from one another. Simply put, we can say it is a give and take relationship. Examples of mutualism include A. Nitrogen fixing bacteria in the root nodules of legume plants. The bacteria are able to fix nitrogen to the root nodules of legume plants, such as beans plants, granite plants, and the rest. And the legume plants protect the bacteria inside the root nodules. B here we have lichen. This is an association between the algae and the fungi. Here is the algae and the ones that are green in color, while the fungus are the ones that are black in color. If you look at the image directly opposite, you will see that. Algae gets protection from sunlight and dryness, while the fungi gets food produced by the algae during photosynthesis. See, we have mycorrhiza. This is an association between fungi and the roots of higher plants. D. We have pollinators and flowers. Examples of pollinators include butterflies, bees, moths, and some birds. Now, looking at the first image, you see a butterfly on a flower. The butterfly gains food, known as nectar, from the flower, while the flower gets pollinated by the relationship. Another is protozoa in the guts of termites. The termites feed on wood, cellulose wood to be specific. They don't have the ability to digest the cellulose, so the protozoa in their gut do the digestion for them. Why the termite protect the protozoa in the gut? Another is between the ox pecker beds and mammals such as cattle, hippopotamus, and buffalo. The beds feed on their parasites. The benefit for the um, hippopotamus or buffalo Yes, they get their parasites removed and they're also warned of dangers around their environment. The second one here is commensalism. This is an association between two unrelated organisms in which one of them benefits while the other neither gain nor loss. The organism that gains is called the commensal and they are usually smaller. The commensal attaches itself to the other for food, transport, camouflage or even shelter. Examples of commensalism include A. Bacteria in the large intestine of human. Now, the bacteria feed on the feces, which are waste products in the large intestine of human. Now, this feeding of the bacteria on the waste does not affect the human in any way. B. Shark and remora fish. Looking at the first image, the remora fish attaches to the shark for transport and food. Why the shark is not affected by them? 
see we have the epiphytes and flowering plants epiphytes are ground floor um, plants in the forest they need sunlight for photosynthesis so what they do is that they twist around the flowering plants to get to the top and also get access to sunlight this relationship can also be called epiphytism another is between sea anemones and the hermit crabs looking at the last image the crab gains protection from the sea anemones by camouflage while the sea anemones is not affected e we have oysters and crabs another example is between the clownfish which hides from enemies in the poison tentacles of the sea anemones why the sea anemones are not affected by them so in this relationship the host does not gain anything neither does he lost anything the third one is parasitism this is an association between two unrelated organisms in which one of them benefits by deriving a nutrient that is food while the other is harmed in the relationship the organism that gains food is called a parasite and is usually smaller while the one that gets harmed in the process is the host the hosts are mainly deprived of your food, your tissues, sulfur skin irritation, and sometimes inflammation of their skin surfaces. All right, there are two types of parasites, and they are what ectoparasite. What did I say? Ectoparasite. The word ecto stands for outside. Good. This is a parasite found outside the body of their host. Examples are tick, lice, fleas, and the rest. So we have endoparasites. These are parasites found inside the body of their host. Endo stands for inside. Examples are tapeworm, hookworm, liver fluke, roundworm, and so on. Examples of parasitic association include in plants, parasitic plants like Doda or Mistutu prostitute their hostoria into flowering plants to get their food. Looking at the image directly, opposite it, opposite that statement, you see the parasites twisted around the bigger plants, which is the flowering plants. What they do is that they project out their hostoria into the body of the flowering plant. From there, they can get the nutrients from the body of the flowering plant into themselves. That is indeed parasitic. B, we can have parasitic association in animals elsewhere. A, we have tapeworm in the intestine of man. The tapeworm feed on the digested food of man, which can be harmful to the man. B, or the second point here, we have the liver fluke in the liver of man. They feed on the blood of man. Lice in the hair of man, they feed on blood of man. Ticks on the body of dogs and other mammals, they feed on the blood of dogs and other mammals. Here are images to explain or to show you what we meant by all this parasitic association we've been talking about. Predation. This is another kind of association. This is an association between two unrelated organisms in which one of them hunts and kills the other for food. The one that kills is the predator and they are usually larger and stronger. Why the ones killed and eaten is the prey and they are usually smaller and weaker. In predation, Predators kills it preys immediately. But in parasitism, the parasite does not necessarily have to kill the host immediately. Now, examples of predation association include the one between lion and antelope, hawks and chicks, bear and fish, leopard and buffalo, and a whole lot of other out there. Here are images showing predations among animals. We have the hawk that killed a chick and is feeding on it. We have a bear that killed a fish and we feed on it. Yes, yeah, the hawk killed a chick and it's, it's feeding on it. We have a bear that killed a fish, yes, and it will feed on it. And we have um, yes, a lion feeding on an antelope or a gazelle or any other mammal to feed on it. Here we have competition. This association is between two organisms of the same or of different species, whereby they fight for the limited resources in their environment. When you hear the word competition, the first thing that comes to mind is fighting 
or struggling for something yes all right those things they are struggling for is called resources or are called resources resources competed for can be food space mates water light and so on and the weaker organism in the fighting in the competition gets eliminated all right competition between organisms of the same species known as intraspecific competition intraspecific competition remember that the word intra stands for yes same why that between organisms of different species known as interspecific competition interspecific competition the word inter here stands for yes different examples of competition association include a the one between goat and cow whereby they compete for the same grasses to feed on in their habitats b between tiger and lion they can compete for the same mammal like gazelle to feed, feed on here are some examples of images showing competition just take your time and go through the images here the last one here we have neutralism this is defined as an association between two species that interact without having any effect on one another so their presence together does not have any effect here the effect of interaction can be said to be insignificant in the relationship example of neutralism association include the one between rainbow trout and dandelions now the rainbow trout is a fish and the dandelion is a flower now even if they are living in the same habitat there is no visible relationship between them that means there is no visible relationship between them even when they share the same habitat all right next we're going to be talking about tolerance yes tolerance is defined as the ability of an organism to withstand or resist any unfavorable changes in the environment or habitat where they are found sometimes there might be an increase or a decrease in abiotic factors examples of abiotic factors include heat water light humidity cold salinity amount of gases in the environment and even the ph which can cause a change in the environment now what do we mean by this an organism might be exposed to a certain um change in the abiotic factor let's say temperature there might be an increase or a, a decrease in the internal temperature of an organism or the environmental temperature of an organism now this changes the ability for an organism to withstand the changes and survive is what we call tolerance now what is tolerance range this is defined as the range between the minimum and the maximum limits of abiotic factors that an organism can withstand. Beyond this limit, death can occur. The optimal range is the best for the organism to grow, reproduce, and even survive. Let's use the image here to study the meaning of tolerance range. Now, when there is a change in the abiotic factor, there is a limit, a range. Okay, We have the lowest range and we have the upper range the low range and the high range the minimum range and the maximum range now within this range the organisms will survive but outside this range the organism will not survive let's take temperature as our example let's assume that an organism is exposed to temperature and the tolerance range is between 0 degree to 42 degree now from 0 degree 1 2 3 4 5 6 to 42 degree if the temperature of that organism is within this the organism will survive but anything like minus 1 minus 2 and the rest the organism will die because it is outside the range okay that the of abiotic factor that the organism can tolerate and let's say 43 44 is also outside the what the range so the organism will die so the optimal range is the top and that is the best range for the survival of an organism lastly we are going to be looking at geographic range this is defined as the area within the minimum and the maximum limits where a species of organism can only be found due to its tolerance yes we have different kind of habitats we have tropical habitats or tropical region in an habitat we can also have the temperate region the tropical region is the hot region the weather there is always hot 
why the one in the temperate region the weather is always cold now organisms can tolerate and survive where in temperate region and some organisms too can survive where in tropical region because they are within their minimum and maximum limits now picking an organism from tropical and putting it in a temperate region the organism might die or picking an organism from the temperate region to the tropical the organism might die because it's not within the area of a minimum and maximum limits all right i want to say we are true with our lesson for today but we have what we call student activity now student activity are questions from the lesson we've done all you need to do is go through them and try to answer them yeah we have the answers to the student activity it's time for you to mark yourself I hope you have hundred percent okay don't forget to subscribe to my video channel don't forget to view don't forget to download and don't forget to learn something so I want to say thank you for learning me um, learning in this class today for joining me and for learning in this class today have a wonderful time bye bye